Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you for joining. I'm Helen Noble, celebrant of Surrey, founder of Swansong and co-founder of the Healthy Marriage Success Course. And I'm here to give you weekly insights and wisdom to all things ceremony. This week, I'm talking family politics. How do you walk up the aisle with not the person that you don't want and with the person that you do want? And where do you go from there when it comes to speeches and everything else ceremonial? So, you might be discovering that sometimes weddings or funerals or any high pressured situation may not bring out the best in your loved ones, may not even bring out the best in each other. Um, it's, it's fairly well known that marriage will bring out your darker side. <laughs> but until that comes and you're actually just planning a wedding, how do you keep everyone happy, but still keep true to yourself, but without being disrespectful and without having to tolerate? Because actually tolerance means you're not accepting it. You're tolerating it to a point and at some point, you're not gonna tolerate it more, anymore. So what is that point where you stop tolerating it? And a lot of people, I think, make the mistake of saying, do you know what, we'll just get the wedding out of the way and then we will deal with it. Mm -mm. <clears throat> Actually what you want to do is to make the wedding the start of the new behavior that you want. The wedding is that transition between being, say it's the parents that you're battling with, being the child and then being the adult. So at the wedding, when you are the adult in the room, you are the one making your life choices, investing in your future financially, emotionally, however it is that that investment is, that is where the transition starts. That is where you set the precedent. So that is where you say, not in a bridezilla or um, ungrateful way, but it's where you get your empowerment to go, it's not from let's get the wedding out, out the way and then let's behave differently. The wedding is the time. It is the place to stand and be counted as the grown up with your choices and how you want your future and your relationship to be and how the interaction is with those around you. So, say for example, you're a bride, say you've come from a single parent home and your mum is the one that brought you up, for example. Actually, your dad really still wants to give you away and you're feeling a bit, really? It's not really your place, is it? Because you haven't brought me up, so I'm not yours to give away. You're also thinking, oh, do you know what? He doesn't get much, at least if he gets this, then I've done my bit and I've done my dues. We have conversations, chat with your celebrant, chat with me if I'm your celebrant, and we work out a way to make sure you are happy with your decisions. I've done YouTube on this before about the difference between choice and decisions. You have all these choices, you can choose whatever you like, but when you make that decision, that is what carries you on to the future. So if you decide, actually, do you know what? I'm gonna stand by my mum, she brought me up, she can stand by me, but I understand that dad wants his thing and I don't want to take that away from him because actually all the men I know, they're like, I get to walk my daughter up the aisle. It's like the thing. So I've done a wedding in the past several times actually, where both parents have walked the bride up or the groom, depending where you're at, um, either side. So they don't have to walk up together. You're in the middle as you always have been. Um, you've got one one side, one the other. You get up to the top and you drop them off and you can drop them off at the second row. That sounds like, yeah, and, but actually mentally in your head, you're like, do you know what? The front row are for my bridesmaid and my best man, for example, or my women of excellence and my kids. Um, it might be that actually you're fine and the parents can sit in the front row. But if you're like, no, do you know what? The front people are my village. They are my people. 
And so it is your women's of excellence or your or your bridesmaids or your groomsmen, whatever, whoever are your, your village, your people that you are taking with you as your grown up self into your marriage because you've invited them to come along. And it might be you drop your parents off and go, thanks, I'll take it from here. And you do it with grace and you do it with a smile. You even might want to say, thanks, I'll take it from here. And they give you a kiss and you walk up to me and we're like, welcome. Um, and I can, you know, make a thing of it in a nice way. I can say, you stand here having been escorted up the aisle by both parents. Um, I'm sure they're with pride, but you took those final steps on your own as the independent woman that you are, for example. Um, so that's a way of dealing with the aisle situation. Then you would move on to photos and again, is that do you have family photos do you not do you not this is where having the photographer briefed i would say is really key so you would say to the photographer look you know this is our situation please can you be mindful um if if they are given not the photographer if the family are given too much choice to dither they start dithering and actually think about what the point of the wedding photos are if someone's like oh, what's the point you're like to get a record it's to get a factual record of who is in your life and who they all are from a genealogy point of view from a 20 years from now when your eight-year-old has to do family tree homework and you can say that's grandma that's great grandma and that's aunt so and so who is dad's cousin they'll be like oh i didn't know that even if that moment in time it doesn't feel right because the wedding is the transition from your past self to the hope of how you want your future those photos have a point and they are a moment in time that tell you the facts this is our family tree because at some point you're going to need them um it might be you get pregnant they're like what's your family history you'd be like god i don't know and it might be you look at the photo you're like oh yeah blah 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 Actually, wedding family group photos are really useful. Trust me, trust me on that one, having done the family tree and needed to fill out the photo and gone, who's that? <laughs> so brief the photographer and the photographer will probably just run through it and give them two runners, one to get the list, one to do the running and they just keep rotating and it keeps the movement up and you don't get time to dither and all the politics don't have breathing space. It's just boom, 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 boom. And you're like, brilliant, thank you, say cheese. And off they go. Um, so then the third thing are the speeches. Now I've been doing a lot more MCing this year because my little one is not so little, she's five. Um, because obviously last season she was four and it was all a bit too much to get back home at midnight. But so this season I've been doing more emceeing and master of ceremonies hosting type stuff. So I've been with you from beginning to end, like literally midnight, last one out the door. Sometimes, not always, sometimes. Sometimes when there's your first dance, it turns what you need. Um, but because I've got to know you, because I've written the ceremony, because I've done the aisle politics and I've done the photo politics, it comes to the speeches politics and I can emcee the charm out of any family politics, even if it's, for example, a drunk member of the family that you know is gonna get hammered and I'm the one in the loo rubbing their back so that you don't have to get affected by it um, or holding their hair or whatever. Because comes the speeches, I can say, well, you know, blah, 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 place, 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 charm, 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 smile, smile, smile. Everyone feels a little bit special. Let's hold them a moment for Da, 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 da. Um, it might be bantering, it might be a lot more sensitive, it might be quieter, but I'll know, because we've done the whole journey. And so the speeches don't need to be political, it doesn't need to be about the politics. It's about you, your marriage, and your relationship with everybody in that room, and how and why you've invited them forward on that journey with you. You haven't eloped, you haven't got married in secret. I mean, you may have gotten married in secret, but you're having a wedding with everybody because it's the wedding event. It's the fellowship, it's the connection. So we want everyone to join together in fellowship and in connection. So family politics at a wedding, don't put it off. The wedding is the transitional time where you go from that old self and habits and worry and sense of duty and whatever it might be 
to standing your ground and declaring with grace, with me, with support, with a framework that we've worked together through the ceremony politics, through the photos, through the speeches and through anything else that you might need. Don't fear it, embrace it, hold it, harness it and move forward with your decisions because you've realised all the choices that you have. Don't fear the politics, embrace it. Celebrant way. Lots of love. Hope that was helpful. See you next week. Don't forget to hit the bell, subscribe, weekly, weekly.